What do you do when you want to observe somewhere so deep in space that you can never reach? You send a space observation station. NASA has precisely done that by sending the James Webb Space Telescope to deep space so that it can help us see more of our universe. One of the places the space telescope will be pointed is at the very edge of the universe, and the finding at the edge of the universe promises to be scary. Welcome to Mystery Hub, where we unravel the deepest and darkest mysteries of the world for you. In today's video, we are going to talk about a terrifying new discovery made at the edge of the universe by James Webb Telescope. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. If we only look 100 million light years around us, we see a peaceful part of the universe with neat old galaxies that look like the Milky Way, the galaxy that we are a part of. The space in between is more or less empty, but if you use modern telescopes to look billions of light years away, and thus billions of years back in time, the early universe looks very different indeed. Many galaxies are chaotic in shape and produce new stars at a rapid rate or have a gigantic black hole at their center that sends out clusters of particles into space, causing shockwaves there. And although fledgling galaxies can only grow gradually according to computer simulations, by consuming their little brothers, they appear to be large and massive surprisingly soon after the Big Bang. So, there was something extraordinary and courageous needed to go out deep in space and unravel the mysteries hidden from the human eye. To fulfill this fantasy, NASA built the iconic James Webb Space Telescope, which is the successor to the famous Hubble Telescope. It is the most powerful space telescope ever built and a complex piece of mechanical origami that has pushed the limits of human engineering. According to its creators, it's a cosmic time machine capable of seeing galaxies and stars as they were as few as 100 million years after the Big Bang, the unimaginably violent genesis of the universe. This telescope is so powerful that if you were a bumblebee 240,000 miles away, which is the distance between the Earth and the Moon, we will be able to see you said John Mather, a mission's senior project scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. So what are we going to do with this great telescope? We're going to look at everything there is in the universe that we can see. In addition, while other space probes such as the 1989 Cosmic Background Explorer have technically studied a greater distance into the universe than Webb will, this telescope was designed not to see the beginnings of the universe, but to see a period of the universe's history that we have not yet seen," said John Mather. So in simple words, every time you look at the moon, you're looking back in time because the light doesn't travel instantaneously. The further the light source, the longer it takes for its light to reach you. Down on Earth, if someone across the room switches on a light bulb, it would take an infinitesimally short time for its illumination to hit your eyes. But if someone were to stand on the moon and switch on a light bulb, it would take 1.3 seconds for you to see it back on Earth. In essence, every time moonlight reaches your eye, you're looking back in time by 1.3 seconds. And that's just the moon, some 283,855 miles away. The James Webb Space Telescope can look much farther into deep space, about 13.7 billion light years away, which means it can look 13.7 billion years back in time. That's just 100 million years after the universe was born. As it will search for clues to what happened right after the Big Bang, it will use natural cosmic flashlights called quasars to watch the epoch unfold. Thought to be powered by supermassive black holes, quasars live in the centers of galaxies and emit immensely luminous light. If you want to study the universe, you need very bright background sources, says Camilla Pacifici, who is affiliated with the Canadian Space Agency and works as an instrument scientist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. A quasar is the perfect object in the distant universe because it's luminous enough that we can see it very well. Plus, 
thanks to a long list of high-intensity equipment, Webb won't just be taking pictures of the distant universe as is. Webb is programmed to employ infrared imaging. Therefore, arguably the most crucial feature of Webb is its infrared imaging capabilities, which is the primary reason it can capture such rich, unfiltered glimpses of the ancient universe. As we know that the universe is continuously expanding, so cosmic bodies get farther away from Earth along with the rest of the space's fabric, and the light illuminating them stretches out simultaneously, resulting in a phenomenon called redshift. Redshift has to do with the way light on the electromagnetic spectrum exists in wavelengths, which sort of looks like curvy zigzags. On one end of the spectrum, we have blue light, on the other end, red light. Blue light wavelengths are shorter, so you can think of them as having a ton of narrow, pointy waves on the zigzag. Red light has longer, stretched out wavelengths. So with the universe expanding, quasars' length of blue light slowly stretch out like pulling on a rubber band, and as they get longer, they become redder. Once those wavelengths get really far on the red end of the spectrum, they'll enter what's called the infrared light region. Unfortunately, the human eye can't see infrared light, and Hubble can only see a portion of it. Webb, on the other hand, is designed for the job. It will pierce through dust clouds to study objects in space illuminated by light in the infrared region. Because infrared information can also reveal physical properties, Webb will identify whether molecules like water are present on a faraway planet. And that's just the beginning. While there are some hypotheses about what Webb might find, like the way particles once reionized to form stars, the discoveries it makes will likely be of things we never even thought to ask about. We think that the tiny ripples of temperature other telescopes like COBE observed were the seeds that eventually grew into galaxies, Mather said. But because those probes aren't armed with infrared imaging, we don't know exactly when the universe made the first stars and galaxies, or how for that matter. That is what we are building JWST to help answer. This is why the edge of the universe is clearly not at some 13 billion light years from Earth. It is estimated to be much beyond that. So what is the farthest astronomical object humans can see? One thing is that there are some objects in the universe that we might never see. About 16 billion light years from Earth, this marks the current cosmic event horizon of the universe. So are we there yet? Nope, not yet. This distance is the upper limit of light ever reaching us if it originated at that distance today. This implies, beyond 16 billion light years, the expansion of space is faster than the speed of light itself. Obviously, the light will never reach us as it will have to go through a relatively expanding universe. This also signifies that any event that may have happened today beyond the cosmic event horizon will never be observable by us no matter what. But we can see even further through telescopes like JWST. And this is it for today. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.